The City and Guilds College was established over a hundred years ago. Since the early years of this century, it has been the engineering college of the Imperial College of Science and Technology in the University of London. It's now officially recognised as Britain's top engineering school. Its reputation rests on the quality of its staff and students and on the range and calibre of the research being carried out. This video presents a small selection of the many innovative and important projects that are now underway in City and Guild departments. The important tourist area around Paphos in Cyprus is severely constrained by a lack of fresh water. A new supply is to be created by a reservoir behind the proposed Armino Dam on the Thacharizos River, a project designed by British consulting engineers Howard Humphreys and Partners and model tested in the Department of Civil Engineering in the City and Guilds College. The dam is formed by embanking local rock and soil, a design which is relatively inexpensive but which can be easily breached with disastrous consequences if water is allowed to pass over the dam in times of heavy rains. To prevent overtopping, a spillway is blasted out of the rock to allow water to pass safely around the dam. The flood flow accelerates down the spillway and at the bottom its energy is dissipated in turbulence to prevent erosion of the riverbed. The Arminu Spillway's long weir crest is favourable in limiting the reservoir level rise while its angled sections serve to contract the flow into a narrow chute. At the bottom, a ski jump launches the water into the air and the energy is dissipated as it impacts on the rocks below. Physical models are necessary to model complicated flow patterns which cannot be predicted mathematically. And in the process of modeling this Arminu spillway, we've been able to refine the original design and reduce the original volume of rock excavation by a very worthwhile 10%. Heart disease is a major cause of death or incapacitation in the developed world. The disease affects the large arteries, which supply blood to all the organs. A healthy artery provides an unrestricted passage for the blood flow. As the disease progresses, deposits are formed in the lining of the walls. The walls become less flexible and plaques develop, which restrict the blood flow, possibly leading to blood clots or tissue starvation. The flow in arteries is complex since it's unsteady and involves flexible three-dimensional branching passages. At Imperial College, collaborative work is being done between the Department of Aeronautics and the Centre for Biological and Medical Systems in association with the General Electric Company. Their common aim is to make advances in the use of magnetic resonance imaging to measure arterial blood flow and in modelling the results on computer. One application of this is to study the flexibility of the artery walls. When the heart contracts, the blood is set in motion by a wave which propagates through the arteries. The wave travels at a speed which is directly related to the artery wall stiffness. Using special imaging techniques, it's possible to measure the propagation speed by placing a subject inside a scanner. Well, the system provides in principle a means of assessing the condition of local sections of artery without obviously having to chop the artery open and have a look. Magnetic resonance imaging also provides images of the structure of the arteries and the flow patterns in the regions where the plaques tend to develop, providing a wealth of detailed information on artery geometry, the variation between individuals and the effects on the three-dimensional velocity field. We're all used to the idea that miniaturization revolutionized electronics, making it both cheaper and more powerful. In the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, work is being carried out on a relatively new study area, micromechanics. Well, the aim of micromechanics is to extend what you can do in microelectronics to make devices that interact or interface with their environment in some way, like very small sensors and actuators. 
Many devices are fabricated on silicon chips using clever etching techniques that allow some regions to be removed while preserving others. This allows the construction of miniature suspended beams. When forces are applied, the beams flex. Using simple integrated electronics, these motions can be read out to yield a measure of the force. Despite the appeal of micromechanics, only a few devices can currently be made because surface processing yields features that are essentially flat. This limitation could be overcome if parts could be made flat and then removed into position to provide a fully three-dimensional structure, like a pop-up book. A silicon equivalent to the pop-up book has been identified. This is surface tension, responsible for the curved shape of liquid droplets, a shape which has the minimum surface energy. Small pads of solder are placed on flexible hinges. When the solder is melted, the liquid again adopts a shape minimizing its surface energy. In fact, for the correct quantity of solder, the surface energy can be reduced still further if the hinge rotates to an upright position. The forces available are surprisingly strong, strong enough to rotate pieces of printed circuit board that are 10 or 100 times the size of the silicon devices envisaged. Initially, these will be test structures aimed at demonstrating the principle. If the method works, the first real devices made will be three-axis accelerometers for navigation systems. Research moves from small-scale to large-scale technology in the Department of Chemical Engineering. This is the Batch Pilot Plant, a multi-purpose experimental facility designed to provide a flexible, fully automated test bed for a research project on chemical, biochemical or food processes, the subject of the latest project making use of the facility. The main objective of this project is to develop an integrated operating support system for flexible batch plant operation. So we want to demonstrate and assess the process system engineering methodology to the development of enzyme-based food processes. It's important that the plant is always used in the most efficient manner possible. A process scheduling and production planning control system is therefore an important component and production schedules are continuously updated to reflect the current status of the plant. For these purposes, a reactive scheduling software system called Superbatch has been developed. A plant-wide dynamic model is used to carry out safety assessments, control sequence validation and process improvement studies. This is also used as part of an integrated online decision support system for plant operations. For food and biochemical processes, product quality is ensured by controlling variables such as temperature and acidity at defined values. Researchers are able to test control strategies using the inbuilt simulation models. The next stage of development will enable online validation of the temperature controller. The batch pilot plant is a unique facility for a tertiary level institution. It is highly automated and can be reconfigured to handle a variety of processes. 1994 marks the 10th anniversary of the Center for Composite Materials, a department which has been involved with the use of composite materials and their properties, including the field of fracture mechanics. One of the major concerns with such new materials is their ability to cope with years of use without failure. The wings of the A310 Airbus are manufactured using a laminated carbon fibre plastic composite. Fracture mechanics is being used to investigate the kind of delamination damage caused by runway stones hitting the surface during takeoff. The demonstration shows delamination crack growth in a carbon fibre composite. Researchers use the information from such tests to design improved components with greater structural capability. The human body is also required to cope with stress, especially when it's placed in extreme conditions where joints are put at risk. In the Department of Mechanical Engineering, success has been achieved in the development of an artificial knee ligament, a part of the body particularly prone to damage amongst sportsmen and women. 
The biomechanics group were instrumental in the research that led to the commercial release in 1990 of the apex ligament system, a replacement for the anterior cruciate ligament of the knee. Several hundred patients have received new knee ligaments since this time, with a success rate of over 90%. Government agencies worldwide require updated information on pollution and its effects on health. The Centre for Environmental Technology has recently conducted research in London and monitoring in other cities with huge pollution problems such as Athens and Mexico City. Up-to-date systems for monitoring levels of traffic-generated pollutants in the atmosphere are being used to develop models of personal exposure. These models and other data are being used to assess the effect of air pollution on hay fever. Traffic wardens in London participated by wearing passive monitors for nitrogen dioxide. At the Centre for Analytical Research in the Environment at Silwood Park, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, a recently developed technique, is being used to analyse trace elements. Virtually any trace element can now be measured to less than one part in a billion. Samples are digested in an acid mixture and introduced into an argon plasma at very high temperatures. This produces ions that are monitored as they're extracted and the results are fed into a computer. A system donated by Olivetti Research Laboratories is being used by the distributed software engineering section in the Department of Computing as a case study for their system design and construction tools. The Active Badge, a small unit worn by all members of the section, periodically sends out infrared signals picked up by sensors in each room of the study area. The system is designed to locate badge wearers quickly and easily, with their whereabouts constantly being updated on computer screens as they move from room to room. Badge wearers can send information and receive it at any sensing site, rather like an advanced paging system which allows the wearer to receive information but also to be found. A first step towards mobile computing. City and Guilds is now the largest of the constituent colleges. Of its 3,322 students, 2,006 are studying for first degrees. All of the City and Guild's departments now offer four-year courses leading directly to the Master of Engineering degree, and most offer courses that include a year spent in continental Europe. In addition, 1,316 students are at postgraduate level and some 25 specialist PG courses are offered. 663 students are working towards research degrees. The welfare of these students is not only a matter for the current staff. It has also become a strong lifetime interest for many former students, now members of the City and Guilds College Association. One of the key mechanisms for acquiring and distributing support is the Old Centralians Trust. The Old Centralians Trust was established in 1965 by a group of concerned old students and the current student officers. It exists mainly through the generosity of some eminent old Centralians, notably Holbein, Fenton and Rosen. The purpose of the Trust is to help current students at college to further their education in the broadest possible sense. By this I mean we're not there to shoulder the responsibilities of the college, but to open up new horizons for students. The Trust Fund provides support in a very wide range of areas. For instance, we provide undergraduate research opportunities in departments, we provide travel scholarships abroad, we have done that for over 100 students, we support sporting activities, cultural, social events, and of course we give help to students in financial hardship. We've produced grants in under 24 hours if necessary. The Trust provides a major grant to the Pimlico Connection, which is a fascinating national model for peer tutoring in schools. Students from college sit alongside school children and tutor them in science and mathematics. The students find this enjoyable, it helps them to learn how to communicate their art, 
and the school children find it enjoyable because they're talking to people whom they can make easier contact with sometimes than their teachers. The Imperial College Boat Club has an impressive record of successes, most notably in recent years at Henley, and the Trust has recently purchased a small boat to help in their training. Bowen Urges, the college union mascot, which as everybody knows is a wonderful veteran car, 1902 James and Brown, is extremely expensive to maintain. Recently the Trust paid for a refurbishment of this old motor car, which still annually makes the trip to Brighton and takes part in the Lord Mayor's show. Financial hardship happens to both students from this country and overseas. Suddenly a parent can die and the grant money runs out. Farmlands can be flooded in a disaster overseas. Students can become refugees because a government is overthrown. In circumstances like this, it is important that we provide funds quickly to enable the student to carry on the one important thing, that is their degree. Within the college's academic environment of up-to-the-minute teaching and flourishing research, the old Centralians Trust Fund and the City and Guilds College Association are supporting present students and encouraging their development in many non-academic ways. With your help, the City and Guilds College will continue to graduate engineers who can make the best possible contribution to industry and to society.